द वर्ल्ड्स बिगेस्ट सेमी कंडक्टर कंपनी इज नॉट ए यूएस कंपनी और ए चाइनीज कंपनी इट इज ए कंपनी फ्रॉम ए कंट्री ताइवान अ कंट्री विद ए पॉपुलेशन लेस देन मुंबई पॉपुलेशन इनफैक्ट वन ऑफ द रीजन चाइना हैज बीन वॉन्टिंग टू कैप्चर ताइवान इज दिस सेमी कंडक्टर कंपनी द नेम ऑफ दिस कंपनी इज ताइवान सेमी कंडक्टर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कंपनी लिमिटेड टी एस एम सी TSMC 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 Taiwan a tiny country of less than 100 miles of length and merely 2.3 crores of population has managed to create world's biggest semiconductor company but how exactly how big is tsmc that china and us are fighting over what is so unique about tsmc or the business mode of tsmc how much money is tsmc making for its investors what are some of the exciting future plans of this company and what are some of the risks of this company all of this and much more in one single video that will make you learn a lot about semiconductor businesses if you don't know me my name is rahul jain i'm a full time investor and a full time content creator with that shall we get this video cracking let's go it all started with this man morris chang also called as the father of taiwan semiconductor industry morris was born in the city of ningbo in china in 1931 he went to the us for higher studies and got a job in texas instruments after spending 25 years of his career at texas instruments finally he became the group vice president of semiconductor businesses in the 1980s morris noticed that texas instruments japanese factory was producing two times more production yield than their factory in the US so morris realized that labor in japan and asia is much more skillful therefore very soon us companies will start outsourcing semiconductor manufacturing work to japan and asia so morris went around for funding but everybody rejected him investors rejected him saying that this is a bad idea morris how can a new company compete with giants like intel and texas instruments giants like intel and texas instruments took pride in designing and making their own chips. A legendary saying in the industry back then was real men have fabs. When Morse went out to get funding, he went to many named companies and they told him Morse your idea won't get off the ground if you get it off the ground it can't scale but soon after a golden opportunity knocked at morris's door when sun yan son the head of taiwanese government recruited morris to be the leader of taiwan's research and industry program and as a result in 1987 morris chang founded tsmc fast forward to 2021 intel now relies on tsmc's chips TSMC is not just the biggest semiconductor company in the world but it is also the 10th most valued company in the world with a market cap of over 1 trillion US dollars as of November 2024 This 1 trillion US dollars valuation is higher than 150 plus countries GDP including Sweden, Netherlands and Israel and so on. This is the scale of TSMC. What is so special about TSMC or what is the business mode of TSMC? Well, over 90% of world's most advanced computing chips are manufactured by TSMC. Apple's iPhone uses TSMC's chips. Amazon and Google uses TSMC's chips for their cloud servers. Microsoft Xbox for gaming lovers, they use TSMC's chips. Smart TVs, cameras, electric toothbrush set top box you name a device and you will probably find a tsmc's chips inside or it is running on tsmc's technology what makes tsmc a unique semiconductor company is their ability to produce the smallest chips in the world at scale and with profits these advanced chips that we are talking about are of the size as small as our thumbnails and one such tiny chip may contain more than 50 billion transistors now the size of tsmc's transistor back in 1980 used to be 3 microns and in 2022 it came down to 3 nanometers how tiny exactly is this 1 nanometer let me tell you now a human hair's thickness is almost 80000 nanometers so if i pluck my hair out and i split it into 80000 parts One part's thickness is equal to one nanometer. This is possibly the tiniest unit of thickness after the thickness of an individual atom. So in 2022, TSMC was able to produce 
world's most smallest size chips that no other company was able to produce. And that too with scale and profits. Now manufacturing three nanometer chips need 100% accuracy and 100% dust free environment. And that's why probably TSMC is the most cleanest factory of the world. Companies like TSMC has little competition because the entry barriers to semiconductor manufacturing is huge. This is because manufacturing a semiconductor needs more than 1000 processes. And even if you get one process wrong, the entire process becomes redundant. We are talking about getting all thousand over steps correctly lined up to be able to have a functional chip. Fabricating semiconductors needs decades of experience. That's why as of 2023, TSMC has been able to build 62,000 patents worldwide. Now, any company may be able to produce such tiny tips, but the problem is, can they produce it at a scale and a profit that TSMC is doing? Probably the answer is no. Let me first speak about their scale. In 2023, they produced 12 million wafers, 11,895 different products, serving 528 customers using 288 different technologies. In fact, more than 68% of their revenues in 2023 came from chips that were less than 7 nanometer of the size. So far, if you're liking this video, I request you to hit the like button. Let me know in the comments a simple thank you. It will motivate me to come up with such content for you at zero cost and also you can subscribe to my channel with that let's understand how much of money this company is making so in the last four years the company has managed to double its revenues from 38 billion us dollars in 2020 to 84 billion us dollars in 2024 now a company generating 84 billion US dollars of revenue also has something very very special. If you look at this data you will see that TSMC has been able to generate net profit margins which are as high as 40% meaning for every $100 of revenue $40 is a pure profit. Now compare this with huge profit generating companies like Apple who has a huge pricing bargaining power with consumers are only able to generate 20 to 25% of net profit margins. This is because TSMC probably has much more pricing power than companies like Apple. TSMC's customers like Apple will have to pay whatever TSMC asks them to pay because they have nowhere else to go. This sort of huge profit margin has led to extremely, extremely high cash reserves for the company. As of September 2024, company is sitting on 68 billion US dollars of cash reserves. No wonder in the last 10 years, the company has made its investors richer by almost eight times because the stock prices have gone up by 800%. Speaking about investments, if you also want to learn investments practically, you can consider joining my YouTube member community because almost on daily basis, I share exclusive content and insights from stocks, mutual funds, and various other assets. This will help you become a better investor over a long period of time. The feedback of this community has been excellent. You can simply go to my channel, press on the join button, or you will find the link in the description or in the pinned comments. Before I move ahead, I want you to pause this video and let me know in the comments any good semiconductor companies that you know. Let me know in the comments. Also, if you would like me to cover any other semiconductor, AI, or any new trend companies, let me know in the comments. If more and more people comment, I would read your comments and come up with more and more such videos. Coming back to TSMC, the company has made a fortune. The investors have made a fortune for themselves. But the million dollar question is why such tiny three to seven nanometers of chips are in huge demand? Who are the customers who are buying TSMC's products? And more importantly, where is this demand coming from? So let me give you an example. Let's say you want your iPhone's battery to last for one whole week. Wouldn't it be great? And this is where the size of semiconductor chips inside the iPhone matters the most. If we are able to reduce the size of the semiconductor chip inside the iPhone, then more transistors will be able to fit in one single chip and hence the smartphone's speed will be faster and more energy efficient. 
So who is buying these nano chips from TSMC? So as per an estimate, 25% of TSMC's revenues are coming from Apple alone. In fact, 34% of TSMC's revenues have come from smartphone business segment. Secondly, AI companies like Nvidia, they are also the large customers of TSMC. In fact, 51% of revenues of TSMC came from HPC category, which is high performing computing devices. And who needs these high performance computing devices? These are needed by AI companies because AI companies need to process billions of data, text, videos, images, and so many other types of unstructured data. Let's move to who actually owns TSMC. TSMC was the first Taiwanese company that got listed on New York Stock Exchange. And of course, it is also listed on Taiwan Stock Exchange. TSMC was first listed on the Taiwan Stock Exchange in 1994. In 1997, it became the first Taiwan company listed on the New York Stock Exchange. As of September 2024, big institutions own almost 48% of stakes in TSMC. General public all over the world owns around 41% of stakes in TSMC. Taiwan's government also holds minor stakes in TSMC. So what are the future groundbreaking works TSMC is embarking upon? First one is TSMC is going to come up with two nanometers of semiconductor chips by 2025. If they're able to produce this at scale, this will be the world's smallest chip produced by any company on this planet. Secondly, TSMC is also building a semiconductor manufacturing plant, also called FAB, in Arizona in US. TSMC is now bringing the world's most advanced chip making back to the US with a $12 billion fabrication plant or FAB in the middle of the Arizona desert. It is estimated that TSMC is spending almost 20 billion US dollars in this factory and it is likely to start production in 2025. Not only this, TSMC also has plans to produce two more factories in US. One of them is targeted to be finished by 2028 and for the third one, there is no dates yet. Now, what are the biggest threats for TSMC as a company? Number one is electricity problem as Taiwan is running very, very low on energy. So just to put this in context, TSMC uses almost 9% of Taiwan's electricity. Taiwan is hugely dependent on fossil energies as coal contributes around 42% of their electricity, while 40% of their electricity is generated by the natural gas. Now Taiwan is really running low on energy because they only have around six weeks of coal reserves left. And also when it comes to the natural gas, they only have around one weeks of reserves left. The problem may further amplify as Taiwanese government has promised to shut down their nuclear plan by 2025 because of political reasons. The second big threat that TSMC faces is the location of TSMC because it is inside Taiwan which is surrounded by China. And China repeatedly has threatened to invade Taiwan directly or indirectly. For example, just two months back in October 2024, there was a military drill done by China around Taiwan's territory. Also, just few days back, Taiwan's defense ministry says a large Chinese military force has been detected nearby. Almost a dozen Chinese naval ships, 47 military planes in the last few days were spotted by Taiwanese military forces. And possibly this was one of the reasons Warren Buffett found the location of TSMC a major risk for investors. In this video, I've tried to cover a lot of ground for this company TSMC and a lot about semiconductor businesses in general. None of this should be construed as investment recommendations, but I sincerely hope you like this sort of analysis. If you would like me to continue to make such videos, let me know in the comments any companies that you would like me to cover and I'll be more than happy to come back with more content for you at zero cost. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like the video, let me know in the comments a simple thank you. Also, if you want to learn investing practically, you can consider joining my YouTube member community. Simply go to my channel, press on the join button, or you will find the link in the description or in the pinned comments. With that, I'll see you in my next video. Until then, keep rocking.